Hello everybody, this is Jerry Alt. I was recording this a little bit ago and right in the middle of it, um, my doorbell rang. Two random college students needed passport photos, so went ahead and took care of them, made a couple of dollars, and now I'm back. So I'm just going to start this over and catch you up to where we are. So today I want to talk to you about how to take the image you shot and a background and make a composite that's going to be a little more homogenous than it might otherwise be. One of the, well, there's several problems that uh, I see that are pretty common with composites. One is, and that's what we're going to talk about today, is that the colors don't seem to match. The You may have shot a subject in daylight and then you're going to use a darker background like we're going to end up doing today. You might shoot them without direct light on them. You might have the light coming from one direction, but the light in the underlying background image is coming from a different direction. There's a lot of problems that have to do with the light and the color. The other problem that I find, and I've talked about this once before, and I'm going to cover it again in a little more depth in another episode, is um, replicating the shadows, how to make realistic shadows around the things that you've shot once you put them onto a new background. So today, here's what I've done. I've opened up this uh, portrait I took a couple of weeks ago of the lovely Amber. She's got beautiful skin. You can see she's wrapped in white chiffon. And we were doing some other um, artistic and implied uh, photos. And I thought that a couple of these standing shots would be really good. So I'm gonna use one here today. The first thing I do when I open this from Lightroom into Photoshop, the part that you miss, is that I duplicate the layer. And you'll see there's more white space around this image and that's because I'd already resized it before I restarted the video. So I'm not gonna go back completely to the beginning. But I would have this original background layer and I like to keep that just in case I make a mistake. I don't ruin the photo. Um, if I do things in separate layers above them, then it's somewhat non-destructive. So what I did is I hit, I clicked on the bottom layer, the background, clicked, in my case, on a Mac, Command-J. On a PC, it would be Control-J. And that creates a duplicate layer. So I can turn off the underlying layer, and you see it. It's just a, a complete duplicate of what I had before. The first thing we need to do is clean up skin. I've already done that on this one. She had really great skin anyway. There was very little I had to do. Love the color tone of the skin. And you'll see that I've shot this on gray seamless paper. When I know I'm going to do composites, and for a lot of my portrait work other than, say, headshots and um, uh, passport photos and the like, like I did today, I'm going to shoot on gray. The reason I selected gray and kind of a medium gray in this case is it'll pick up a little bit of light, but there shouldn't be any gray in your skin. So when I do a separation, I'm going to get pretty good contrast along the lines of the of my model. You can see here that there's, you know, really good separation. In fact, if I come really close in, you can even see the hairs on her arms that are properly separated from the background. I don't care if we keep those because it's going to be a composite. Nobody's going to look that close. But the gray I have found is the best for doing this, for being able to consistently cut out the bodies, um, do a good job at separating the hair and the like. So the first thing we're going to do is this separation. I did this once before, but I'm going to walk you through it. If wherever your menu panel is, uh, I've moved mine from the left side to the right side of my page, but up here you can see that I've got um, a quick selection tool selected. And then I'm going to go up and click on Select Subject. By the way, I said this earlier, but need to repeat it since I start over. I'm on Adobe Photoshop 2020. Uh, there is a brand new version, the 2022. I have not gone to it yet. It's an all new version, not a um, simple upgrade. There's a lot of new features in it, but I want to make sure that all of my extensions and tools and the like are working properly with it before I abandon this. So this is my normal everyday workflow. I've downloaded the other version and I've started doing some things in it. Um, there's some cool tools I think it may uh, actually do a better selection. Um, in 2021 you had the Select Sky was added. 
uh, which does a pretty nice job on most skies to pull them out so that you can substitute them or delete them. Uh, but this is still 2020 and it's fine. All right, I'm going to select the or hit the button here that says select subject. That will draw the marching ants all the way around. I'll make this a little bit bigger so you can see the marching ants all the way around my subject. Uh, there's a couple of spots that didn't do a really good job. You can see, I'm going to just move this around with my um, mouse. You can see the hair underneath her arm on the back. There's still some transparency in there. Um, I can tell you because I already went through this that it didn't do a thousand percent selection in between the fingers. So you could be meticulous and go through and select all those little areas, but there are some tools that will help you do a better job. One of them is right next to the select subject, it says select and mask. And so I'm going to click on that. And then it's going to pop up a sub menu that's going to give you some uh, choices to improve the masking process. Uh, the first, it's uh, on my screen because I've moved things around, it's up on the top left. It's a regular paintbrush. That'll add to the selection. I don't want to do that. I want to go to the second brush, which is a refine brush right here. And that refine brush is going to allow me to come in here to these areas where I know there's transparency and basically just paint over them. And then the processor will take a look and say, oh, you meant that to be selected. Okay, let me go through it. Uh, there's a little bit of the material right here that might be selected better as well. I don't typically like to use the refine brush on what are otherwise, in fact, I'm going to go backwards on that. I, I think that's close enough. I can fix that otherwise. I don't like to go through what are hard edges, that is fabrics in particular, walls, objects, and use a refine brush because it'll try to find inconsistencies and sometimes it'll do a worse job. It'll blur things out for you. Um, same thing here with that little bit between the um, fingers. It's probably going to do a worse job in the long run, so I'm going to leave that alone. So when I'm done selecting that, and you'll see here, there's different modes, different ways you can see it. If yours isn't like that, I use the overlay mode so I can see what's been selected. So that's the, uh, the third choice down. You can also do a um, on black, um, which in this case, because there's a gray background, isn't going to help me. I can do a black and white, and then that will show my selected area uh, in white against the, the black background. But I like to see the overlay for simple things like this. I'm trying to do a pretty quick job. There's one other place I noticed right up here by her, the right side of her neck, our camera left. There's a little bit of that fabric and her hair together. So I'm just going to click that. For output, I'm going to leave the settings. They're pretty much, if you take a look at them, they're pretty much 000 across the board. I do have a little bit of smoothing added to this down here. Um, what that tends to do is if it, it avoids some of the jaggies um, in hair and fabric. Um, on shifting the edge, I might come back 1% or 2%, mm -hmm. but typically 0 or minus 1. What that does is just pulls in your selection a very, very tiny bit, maybe one pixel. Make a smoother um, curve, for instance, when it's selecting fabric. I've got this output to a selection down here at the right, not to a new layer. So when I do this to a selection, it keeps me on the existing layer. And that's an important thing for me. If I saved this as a new layer with a mask, then that new layer is going to eliminate, delete the underlying gray background. So if I find that there's a mistake in it and I need to go back and fix something, it's actually harder. So by just having a selection here, it's uh, it does a pretty good job for me. I'm happy with what I've got. Um, I know there's a few imperfections which we'll fix along the way. So I'm just going to save that selection. I'm going to go up to the Select menu and come down to Save Selection. And then, you know, you can name it whatever you want. You can name it the name of your model. Uh, in this case, I can just call it Amber. 
I usually just call them one. If I do multiple selections, I might call them one, two, three. Um, but I'm just going to save this one as amber. And now I can deselect that by hitting the Command-D or Control-D button. And what I've got is the image sitting here, selected in the background. There's a separate channel for the selection. And now I can go and try to find the image I want to use for this. So I have some digital assets saved on my laptop. I'm going to go to the File menu, Place Embedded to find my background image. And you can see I have a whole bunch of them here. Um, of course, I can't remember what they're called, so I'm probably not going to find the one I wanted. Um, maybe this is it. Yeah, this is the one I wanted. So there's a couple of selections here. These came from Summerana uh, Academy. Summerana is a great website, S-U-M-M-E-R-A-N-A um, dot com, and I subscribe to it. Uh, they come out with new digital assets. I mean, here's you know a variety of backgrounds and things you can see that they come up with. Some of these are from them, some are not. But I, um, there are overlays for animals and butterflies and flowers and things like that. And so it, it's relatively inexpensive. Uh, I'm probably not going to you know keep this up forever. But for the time being, uh, it's going to give me some resources. This one that I found is the one we're going to use tonight because this, she's kind of an ethereal subject. So let me make this a little bit smaller. So all I did is select Place Embedded, and now I've got this object on its own layer. And I am going to resize this so that I'm, I'm just trying to see where her head is. I kind of want technically should line up exactly with the white space on it because I'd already done this once before. So I can try this and see where it works out. But that's going to be about where I want it. If you're trying to check placement of a layer you've put over the top, you can go over to the Layers panel and just slide the opacity down so that you can see through. And that's kind of what I'm looking for. I wanted her head inside. I don't really want it centered so much, but I want her to be inside that. All right, so this is a fairly simple composite. A lot of times you've got to do more work on them, but um, with this selected and it's in normal mode, I'm just going to go back to my select button, and now instead of save selection, I'm going to load the selection, and I go to amber, and I pick it, and now it's going to show me where that image will be on my current layer, and I'm going to click the option and add mask. Now, if I just added a mask to this, it would just make a blank space where the outline is. By doing Option and clicking the Mask button, it puts her in the mask. So it's basically revealing that underlying layer to me. So we're pretty close to done. I'm going to do a couple of cleanup things real quick, and then I'll show you how we finish this off and get the colors. Because right now, she's very warm and brown, and that background is darker and bluish, so we're going to fix that uh, with a little trick here. So in terms of cleanup, I'm going to click on the mask portion. I'm going to go to the paintbrush, and I never want to adjust things on this layer at 100% typically. Um, it's just going to, if I was at 100%, um, make this a little bit smaller, and I'm painting with white, so I'm taking away from the mask. If I paint in here, you see what it's doing? is just getting rid of her skin, that it's going straight back to the background. Whoops, I went one too far. Let me reverse that, go back to there. So what I want to do is apply a much lower flow. So I'm usually I'm somewhere around 20 to 22 or 3 percent. Whoops, I did it again. There's 23 percent. And then I'm going to right click on my mouse so that it brings up the properties of the brush, and you can see that this brush was at 100% because I was doing something else with it. And I want this to be a very soft brush because I want all of this to kind of blend in together. So if we look back here where I had tried to fix that selection behind her shoulder, it kind of did a good job, uh, but it, it blurred. I told you that that uh, adjust uh, selection paintbrush sometimes on harder surfaces did a worse job than leaving it alone. So I'm going to 
hit the X key that's going to change this to black. So it's going to paint back in what I had before, and I'm going to just restore the little bit of the fabric that was there. And there was probably a little bit of hair. There we go on that. Um, I see here it's a little uneven. I could go back and fix this again if I'm painting with black. And I'm going to increase the percentage so you can see what the effect would be. I'm going to take that up to about 70 or 80 percent. If I'm painting with black, it's going to bring back the underlying image. So you see how it, it brought back the rest of the edge of that piece of fabric? It's not so important for what I'm doing, so I'm not going to do that. Um, but I can fix it a little bit, just make it a little more even by coming across here. And then you can see where there's some spill of the, it's actually the gray from the underlying layer. So I'm going to switch my brush by hitting the X key again, back to the mask out. And you can see I'm doing this. I've got this percentage higher just so you can see what's happening on the edge. Normally I would do this at 20 or 20 two percent and just continue back and forth doing this just trying to make this faster so I can get that edge of that cloth back where it should be um, and then I'm going to take it back where it should be back to the 20 something uh, 22 or 3 okay and I'll finish up because I want a nice feathered selection here there we go I don't want any hard edges now I'm going to use this on the edge of the hair and you can see it has the effect of taking the very fine hairs and deleting them. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back a couple of steps on that to where that hair is back in there and show you a better method. And that method's gonna help us clean up this under her arms and it's gonna help us clean up the fingers. So what I'm gonna do is while I'm selected on the mask, not on the underlying layer, but on the mask, I'm going to select my dodge tool. Dodge and burn, if you haven't used them, they're destructive processes, meaning once they change the pixels, the pixels are gone. Again, I'm working on a copy of the layer, so worst case, I can go back to that copy and start over. But I'm going to use the dodge. That makes things lighter. It um, will tend to make any of these color pieces, if I just paint over and over and over again, you know, on a spot, it's going to eventually make it lighter, but you can see it's doing it uh, very, very little. Um, let me erase that. So when I'm on the dodge, I want to go up to the top here and I want to select highlights because I want to affect only the brightest parts of the image. And so you see here where it still looks a little grayish or whitish with the hair behind her. This is where I'm going to use this brush. I'm just going to brush over this. I'm at about 60%. You could be at 50% or so maybe. Um, and the reason I'm doing this is it's leaving the hair alone. See, when I did the other thing, it got rid of the hair. This is leaving the hair because I'm only affecting the highlights, the lighter part of what I'm going over. i got to be careful down here because this is part of the background. So that's probably clean enough get up in there. You're going to see where it really makes a difference is down here on the hand. I'm going to blow this up so you can see it. You see that space between the fingers? So I can make my brush a little bit smaller. And I'm making my brush bigger and smaller, by the way, instead of going up and selecting every time. Uh, I'm just using my um, Q key that I've set up on mine to make it smaller and the right bracket key to make it uh, bigger. But I'm going to go in here and just... Uh, I'm going to increase that more so you can really see what I'm doing. I'm still working the highlights and I can just take off some of this. It's going to take a long time to do it like this so probably what I want to do is go back to my paintbrush where I was doing it before. Use the paintbrush on the mask to eliminate most of that color. And this might be clean enough without messing. I'm, I'm running over a little bit onto the finger. Just hit the X key to come to the back to the black and just paint back in what you eliminated from the finger. 
whatever's quickest for you. Now I went, I just switched the X key back to white so I could do this one. I'm gonna find this about right there. See the space in between could have made my brush really small, but I didn't really need to do that. Switch it to black and just make sure that the edges of the fingers are good. Nobody's ever gonna see this in the finished picture anyway. Then there's a little bit over here. And then basically we're done. So that highlight trick, while I'm still here, let's go back to that dodge and burn. So if I go to the dodge, and you see this little white edge around the selection? That's because the selection was approximate. But see what happens here. I'm going to come in even closer so you can see this, almost to the pixel level. You see that little halo you're getting on the skin? If I just use the highlight dodge, you see how that just eliminated all of that? See how it's making it all go away? I'm not going to do it on the whole image. That wasn't the point of this tutorial, but a real easy way to clean up your selections. All right, so the important part of what we want to do here. So I'm going to say that that's good for this purpose. Now, the other thing is you see this figure, she is standing on a cloud and really probably shouldn't be standing on a cloud. So let me go back to my paintbrush, make sure I have a nice, whoops, nice soft brush selected um, right here, 0% hardness, nice soft round brush. I'm going to make that brush bigger. And then what I'm going to do at that 22% is I'm going to just start blending the bottom of what she's got. So it's a cloud. If it was a solid space, if it was a floor or cement or the ground outside, it would be more important that we deal with that contact point. But here it's a cloud. So let her just be in the cloud. So you see how that's just now made her kind of fit into the picture a little bit? All right, the last thing we're going to do when we're going to be done today is I didn't do it before. So you see this layer that has the um, uh, mask on it. I'm going to duplicate that layer. So I'm going to use the Control J again. Now I've got two copies, but the top copy, the one I've just made, I don't want it masked. So I'm going to take, I'm going to unhook the mask by clicking the um, chain link between the two of them to take that link away, and then I'm just going to delete the mask. So now I just have, let me take everything else away for a moment, and you can see that when you look here, all I've got is that background that I added in, right? Okay. So what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to use this not to fix the image, but to fix the color in the image. So the first thing i got to do is get rid of the detail. So I'm going to go up to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and I've already done this once, so I've got it way blurred out. So that you can't see the details, but you can see the color information. You know, maybe it doesn't need to be that much, but somewhere in there. And I want to basically just use the colors. All right, so I'm going to reselect the underlying image. You see, whoops, I've got to select my underneath image, otherwise there's no person in there. All right, so I've got this layer on top of her. When I click on it, see how it covers her up. I'm going to change the mode. Right now it's normal, so that layer is covering my model amber. I'm going to change the mode on this to color. Go all the way down to the bottom to color. And when I change that, you see what it did to her skin. I'm going to switch it on and off. See. It's nice and warm, now it's really blue. Well, that's too blue. Maybe you want to do that artistically. This is your art, you can do whatever you want. I'm going to bring it down, because I just want it to be a more muted, celestial sort of, under the moonlight, you know, kind of glow to this. So 40%, maybe a little bit, a little bit of warmness there. I'll go to 33%. But you see what's happened. I'm going to switch this on and off. This is what she looked like in camera when I shot her, but I put her on a darker nighttime scene. So by putting the layer over the top with the colors that are in the background, blurred it out so that I just got the colors really and I'm not seeing all the individual pieces, now I can use the color mode for this layer to add a little bit of desaturation, 
bring some of the blue tones into everything she's got. There's different ways of doing this. You can do color channels. You can do lutes, which are lookup tables for, for color effects and film effects. A lot of different ways to do this, but this was a quick and easy way. I've affected the imbalance of the entire thing. Um, you notice as I click on and off, the background's really not being affected. And the reason is I haven't done anything other than add color to the subject. And since that color was already there in the underlying layer, it's not changing anything. It's not blurring it out. Um, if I left this in normal mode, see, and then had it reduced by 30%, see how it's impacting the background as well? See how it's blurred and kind of really muted the background? I didn't want to do that. So I'm not using this in normal mode. I'm in color mode, and then it doesn't have that effect. It looks good. Can't even see it. So anyway, there we've got the image. Last thing I would do is resize and um, save that for my client, put my watermark on it, and that one's pretty well good to go. So thank you for that. If you have any questions, um, feel free to make comments below the video. Uh, I always appreciate it if you would like the video, if you appreciated what I'm doing. And if you subscribe, then you will get notice of any future ones that I uh, Put up and I'm going to start doing this on a much more regular basis now that we get past the summer and wedding season and the like and I'm, I'm going to try to do one every week or so. All right, thank you very much. Take care.